Are you using surveys to your advantage? Are you? Yeah? No? Well, let's talk about it. Okay, I'm John. This is the Marketing for Owners podcast, home of the Owners Club. If you haven't joined, there's a free and there's a paid. The free one is at marketingforowners.com slash join. I'll leave you with that. <coughs> it, oh, if you want to know, um, just quite simply, uh, if you're a member of that and you follow the advice and the teachings and so on, it, your business will just be better. Can't be a bad thing, can it? Anyway, surveys. So I'm not, I'm not going to talk too much about the ins and outs of actually performing a survey, but firstly, let me remind you uh, that if you're using online surveys, there are plenty of free tools such as Google Forms. Google Forms comes with uh, any Google Docs thing. If you have a Gmail account or an AdWords account or anything like that, you have a Google account. And if you dive in, in the background, you have Google Forms. That shows you how to use it, set up surveys, etc. It, it collates them, it sends them out, all that kind of stuff. Or just go to surveymonkey.com and use their free level. Of course, there are others, but those will do the job. However, uh, my favourite type of survey is when you actually speak to someone directly, personally, one to one, over a phone, person to person, or even by email. And um, let's just cover email. What I mean by that is, is a simple question. So not, not obviously a whole survey. When I'm talking about uh, Google Forms and SurveyMonkey, that's a whole form, uh, you know, multiple questions and so on. But when you email, you might just say, um, can you tell me which of these two matches you? Uh, you might be, say, for instance, in, in mind for the owners club. Um, are you a beginner in business, or are you, uh, are you, have you been in business a while, but you're a bit stuck and and are looking to, uh, uh, you know, hit the growth, or are you a solid business that just wants to grow faster? There's three levels. Just answer me that, and then from there, I can tailor what I deliver. That is a survey. You might think, well, that's just asking a question. What's a survey? I'm surveying and I can ask others and then I can find out uh, who my most popular, uh, you know, who the popular audience is or I can tailor information for the different streams, the different tracks. And, and that's what we actually do in the Owners Club. This is not about that though. Um, when you are on the phone, I am not meaning those horrible telephone surveys that after you've used if you phoned up the water board or British Gas or a phone company, then someone about a week later suddenly phones you out of the blue from someone completely unrelated and, and says, would you like to take a partner survey? And you say, no, <laughs> not those. I mean, when you are speaking to a customer, again, a few questions. And it is amazing the information you can glean from your customers, from your potential customers or from people who are talking to you. And that's what it's all about. It, it's communication and getting information back. Because in business, we make a lot of assumptions. Uh, we assume people will like this. We don't ask them. We just put it in front of them and try and get them to buy it or that kind of thing. And that quite often doesn't work. So if you are thinking of uh, creating a new service or a new product, when you've got someone on the phone and they've been interested, you've been chatting, say at the end, can I just ask you two quick questions? If we were to, is that something you'd be interested in? Or if we were, or you might say, or if we did it like this, is that, is that the way you'd like it? Or would you think it was something you'd prefer it done some other way? You can actually, uh, you know, you even pre-qualify that person whether they're gonna be interested in the actual service, but then you get to talk to real people who are interested and ask them, if what you are going to spend money and time and effort developing is going to be of interest. Once you've spoken to, I don't know, 20 people about that with that question, because at the end of a call, what are they going to say? They're not going to ignore you. They're going to answer. They're not going to just hang up because you've been chatting to them. These are not people you've just phoned up to ask. This is at the end of a conversation or during a conversation. In fact, 
you might find they have an entire opinion. You might have a whole conversation with them about this. But how about that? Imagine you've got, say, 20 uh, sets of feedback for that product that may hone that product or perfect it before you actually put the effort into developing it. Or if everyone says, no, 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 too expensive, get that from, no, never really needed it. Then you might think to yourself, wow, I'm on the wrong track. I might not develop it over after all. And, and by the way, if that does happen, I challenge you to actually not do it <laughs> because I know you're determined, but your customers are not going to buy it. Okay. So <clears throat> the other one is face to face again. And, and with the face to face sitting down, cup of coffee at a meeting, this where it's not the purpose of the actual meeting. You, of course, you can have top clients and you can go and meet them and take them out for dinner, take them out for a coffee, go to their place, invite them in, have a coffee, have a chat, ask how the kids are, have a natter, and just in general. But then, then ask them some pertinent questions. Now, do not push your luck. Uh, you're probably going to restrict this to three, four or five. So obviously don't ask them demographic questions. Ask, what car do you drive? And unless you're selling cars, of course. But um, you don't want to know uh, if, <laughs> you know, what their age range is. You're obviously not going to ask them what their earnings are. Not those type of questions. But questions that can help you in your business. For example, um, a top client. Uh, a top client uses you over and over and over and spends their money willingly with you. So they are going to give you good answers. So how about something like, if we were to create uh, a second level of uh, like a platinum service, a higher level service, and it had this and that, is this something that you'd be interested in? Or, and, and then you can ask them, uh, you know, and, and how much extra do you think that would worth? What would the benefit be to you? What would you expect to get from some, a service like that? And then you can add, the reason I'm asking you is because being one of our top customers, I value your uh, input and I'd rather create something that is of value to a customer like you rather than just create it, put it out there and hope for the best. So, so consider this tailor-made for you, etc. But you can ask them anything else. Surveys can be used in many ways. Now, there you go. You've got a. Uh, you can think about this. You've got lots to think about there. Just sit down. I've just given some off-the-cuff, instant examples. But just think, surveys are not always a form. Surveys are two or three or four quick questions, ones that are going to help you drive your business forward and formulate a better service, a better product, a better company. Can't be bad. Anyway, it's Tuesday. Two, Tuesday's toolbox tip today is something I use constantly. I've used for uh, ooh, a couple of years now since it was recommended. It's free. It's called Rescue Time. Um, you just add it to your computer and somehow it records and knows when you're working on your computer and when you're working on stuff, whether you're wasting time, whether you're on social media. Of course, your work may involve social media. It's clever like that. You can set it up, but just straight out of the box. doesn't come in a box, but you know what I mean. Anyway, rescue time. You will be amazed how many hours you work and you can tailor how you work and so on to be more uh, to be more efficient and so on but anyway it's, dead. it's very cool works i've got it on a mac it works on windows or mac <coughs> it just sits up in a corner and it just sends you a report at the end of the week easy eh oh and it's free tomorrow we have the wonderful amanda watts amanda c watts if you want to look her up um she's a bundle of laughs and great fun great information about how she set up a business and how she helps people improve their business and life you're gonna love it let me know what you think afterwards. By the way, if you want to give us a rating, I always forget to ask this, just go on iTunes, give us an honest rating, but write down what you think. Um, just love it if it's five stars, but just give us what you think because we read them all and we appreciate them and it shows that we're doing the right, the right job. Okay, see you soon.